Do you remember that one time when Intel launched the world's first quad-core consumer CPU? And then 10 years later was still doing the same thing? Okay, yes, yes. I know there were plenty of other innovations along the way. But that doesn't change the fact that Intel's long-term stagnation did create an opening for AMD to not only continue existing, but against all odds to close the technology gap, taking serious market share from a company that up until then was functionally a monopoly in both the server and the mobile space. Now, that level of stagnation, that's not where AMD is today. But if their new product announcements today are anything to go by, the warning signs are starting to show. In no particular order, we've got a darn near one-to-one rebrand of their last generation laptop chips, a couple new entries in the incredible but obscenely expensive Strix Halo chip family, a better binned refresh of the 9800X3D called the 9850X3D, and some AI performance and usability improvements. I mean, none of these are bad things, but the complete lack of any pricing information is a little ominous and raises another uncomfortable bit of news that AMD uh, <clears throat> didn't mention, the rumored price hikes that are coming on consumer GPUs. Let's talk through all of that after an uncomfortable segue to our sponsor. Grammarly is an AI writing partner that helps you go from draft to done with clear, polished writing that still sounds like you. It supports everything from emails to documents, improving clarity, tone, and flow while keeping your voice intact. Save 20% off Grammarly Pro by clicking the link in the video description. As a wise man once said, when you can't innovate in engineering, innovate in marketing. The unwashed masses who buy our shit won't know the difference anyway. Okay, that's not entirely fair. To AMD's credit, there are some improvements in the new Ryzen AI 400 series. Everything highlighted in gold here is new, but the part that they leave off is how much new they are. Maximum boost clocks of 5.2 gigahertz on a mobile CPU, I mean, that's incredible. It's just that that's only 0.1 gigahertz more than the Ryzen AI 300 series, which wouldn't be an issue. I mean, clock speed's not everything, except that they are also reusing the same mix of Zen 5 and Zen 5C cores. So, when you're talking about mobile processors that are often limited by their cooling solutions and power delivery anyway, no amount of gold text is going to make a 2% difference in boost clock noticeable day to day. The bump in LPDDR5 speed is welcome though, especially for applications that rely on the GPU core that is also faster, albeit just 7%, and it's not going to hurt to be able to run local AI slightly faster. With all that said, the devil's in the details, and while AMD's slide is technically true, it's only true for the top skew. And as we make our way down the lineup, the generational upgrades slowly fall away to make room for what appear in some cases to be generational downgrades. The Ryzen AI7 445, for instance, gets lower clocks, less cache, and the same RAM speed compared to the Ryzen AI5 340. And this comes at the same time that Intel's Panther Lake is rumored to deliver GPU performance gains of like 50%. That's a yikes. Next up is the 9850X3D, a truly impressive looking 5.6 gigahertz desktop chip that promises to once again steal AMD's gaming performance crown and give it to AMD. But again, probably not by as much as we'd hope or as much as was rumored. See, the internet's been ablaze with rumors of a 9950X3D2, a dual 3 dv cache 16-core, 200-watt monster with an alleged 192 megabytes of level 3 cache. But instead, all we got was a speed binned 8-core. Once again, this looks like a really nice piece of kit. We get the same rated power as last gen, along with up to 400 megahertz faster clock speeds than the old king, which is nice. But, um... How does that translate to real-world gaming performance? Well, it's kind of hard to say. See, rather than comparing their own chips directly, AMD instead compared their new hotness to Intel's Core Ultra 9 285K, which is kind of like a real boxer fighting Jake Paul. Fair enough, AMD. It isn't really my place to tell you how to bully your competitors. And come to think of it, it's probably just as well that gamers will need to come to me for their benchmarks anyway. Thanks. 
The Ryzen AI Max Plus announcement. Ooh, this one was shaping up to be a real rebranding snooze fest. I was sitting there thinking like, really? You guys are gonna remind me that Strix Halo can go in a desktop? I literally invested in a company that is doing that. Framework investment disclosure. But then AMD was like, boom! We heard that you love astonishingly fast PlayStation 5 level graphics in a mobile chip, but don't want to pay an extra $500 for the 16 core model. So we put the best graphics on an eight core and a 12 core. Man, I've been using the GPD Win 5 for the last little while for gaming. This thing absolutely shreds clear obscure and like epic details, no upscaling tomfoolery. Like if I could save hundreds of dollars on CPU cores that I don't need, absolutely killer. Unfortunately, Strix Halo is killer for your wallet too, since even the entry level is crazy expensive, but hey, cool new product is a cool new product. AMD then talked for a while about running near cloud quality local AI models that save you from either the limitations of free AI chatbots or the cost of a subscription. The partner they showcased was Liquid AI, who has scary call to talk about pricing buttons on their corporate licenses, but at this time does provide end user access to their models for free. So that's actually pretty neat. But then things got totally off the rails. I'm writing this based on my pre-briefing. So it is possible that the public presentation is a little bit different in the details, but after the local models, AMD shifted to talking about the idea of using iterate.ai to feed an AI agent, your pay stubs, bank information, tax returns, and all that kind of stuff, and then have it generate powerful financial advice, saving you the cost of hiring a financial planner. Direct quote incoming, you can do it yourself. Now look, I'm not saying you should spend a bunch of money on a financial planner, and there are clear privacy benefits to running workloads like this locally. But, and to be clear, this is financial advice. Do not trust an AI to give you financial advice without also having it thoroughly vetted, at least not for now. AMD then talked for a while about the strides that they've made recently on Rock'em with respect to performance improvements and Windows compatibility, and they announced a handful of new features, including, oh, okay, so it's just integration with Comfy UI and a simplified install method? To be clear, I'm not mad. Those are both good things. It's just, don't make me read through four enhancements when two of them are just, we changed the software version number by 0.1 and we have support for the freshly rebranded version of last year's AI processor. Why is everything called AI? I know I'm just a lowly tech YouTuber, but like, is this stuff really working? I mean, AMD says it must be working. They've seen two and a half X growth year over year for their Ryzen AI family, except that guys, I'm just not convinced that that's why anyone is flocking to AMD mobile chips right now. To be clear, I love my Strix Halo Elite Book 8. This thing is freaking awesome. But the co-pilot button has nothing to do with why I like it. I like the performance and I like the battery life. The AI branding thing has gotten so over the top that at this point, it's hard for me to even tell what of it is a begrudging, well, we've got to shoehorn this into everything or our shareholders will abandon us. And what is a genuine misunderstanding of what is driving customers to purchase your products? To be clear, I don't think anyone's gonna be upset in the coming years about having a decent NPU so they can generate weird hybrid animals or 13 fingered French mimes or whatever it is they're into. But I promise you that the other parents in my kids' classes, they don't care if their PC is AI or not, and they don't even know what it means. Then again, they don't use LTT to keep up with the latest tech so they wouldn't even know about our sponsor. Grammarly. At LMG, writing is a big part of our day, especially mine, from emails to large projects. The hardest part is clearly getting ideas down when you're on a deadline. That's where you can find us using Grammarly. It's an AI writing partner that helps professionals with all of their writing needs from draft to done with high quality personalization so you don't lose your voice. Heading over to app.grammarly.com lets us use their AI chat to get a first draft on the page. It removes the friction of starting and as a much needed bonus, it saves us time. Once the draft is there, Humanizer helps everything sound natural and on tone, which cuts down on rewriting. If something needs a tone adjustment, Paraphraser can quickly change how it sounds without altering the message. With Grammarly, we can finish writing faster, letting us focus on what actually matters, like making sure I can catch the next thing that Linus drops. And you get to drop 20% off the price of Grammarly 
Cleverly Pro subscription by using our link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, hey, shout out HyperX Arena for clearing aside enough of these boxes that we were able to use the shooting space. And uh, hey, maybe go check out the short circuit that I did on the GPD Win 5. It's maybe not the uh, most practical application of Strix Halo, but it is one of the coolest ones. This is an amazing little handheld.